Welcome to Regis Algebra 1. This is Lesson 30B, and we will begin a new chapter today. This will be Chapter 12, and it is entitled Radical Algebraic Expressions. Now, before we get to that, let's go ahead and look at our psalm here. Our psalm says, 92, Psalm 92, verses 1 through 2. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. So notice that, um, first off, we're being told to do something. Something is good for us. It, it will be a good habit in our lives. It uh, And it's a uh, habit might just seem like something that you have a choice and you can just do it because it might be a good idea, like brush your teeth, which is certainly is a good idea. But a, a habit is a little more than that. Habits are things that lead to life and well-being. We are grateful that we can brush our teeth because in, in history, uh, poor teeth as a person ages, just even in their 50s and 60s, led to a lot of deaths because of infection and gum disease. And so the idea that we can have good dental hygiene is more than just um, a nice idea. It actually leads to life. And in the similar way, giving praise leads to life. What are the things it exhorts us to do? It exhorts us to give thanks to be grateful, to learn to recognize God's hands, his good gifts. It says every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father. Um, uh, um, I've forgotten the last little phrase of that scripture, sorry. But he comes, um, and the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. So every good and perfect gift comes from God, whether it be the air we breathe, or the thing we in earnest ask for, and he does it for us. And he steps in, and he moves heaven and earth, and does actual miracle in our relationships, in our circumstances, in our physical health. All these things come from God, and so it's good to give thanks, to remember what he has done for us. It says to sing praises, to honor him. When I sing praises... Uh, uh, sometimes it's for what he has done, but also it's for his character. It's for who he is as the scripture reveals it to us. So we want to sing praises. Um, to declare, oh, let me get that sound off, sorry. To declare your steadfast love. The third thing, declare his steadfast love. Now we're speaking here of his nature can be of the things he does, can be of his character, but here this is definitely one aspect of his character, he, his love for us. We want to remi remember it, to remind ourselves of it, and to speak it forth to others, and his faithfulness, to declare his faithfulness. So this seems to be a personal rather than something I do to others, though it could be, what we do to one another as we're congregated together. But it also seems to be personal. Why do I say that? Because in the morning and in the evening, okay, day by day, in, uh, in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Yeah. So this seems on a daily basis, we want to cultivate the habit of declaring who he is, what he has done, and our gratitude for him our gratefulness. And boy, that starts your day on the right foot. Okay? And uh, we start our day beginning with God remembering his goodness and his love to us and his faithfulness to us. And that gives us boldness as we go into the day and it's, it sets our, um, it aligns our spirit to his so that we determine to live this day, Lord, to your glory because you're worthy. You're the one who has who meets every need above and beyond, so grateful with such fullness, with such faithfulness. And then, Lord, at the end of the day, and this is what I like about this psalm also, it exhorts us that at the end of the day, let us wrap the day up like a present 
and give it back to him, declaring again his faithfulness, his goodness over this day, his provision over this day. And so that's a very sweet thing. And one of the things it does for us is it prevents us from taking the trials and the hardships of the day or the failures of the day, the things that I was dis- I were perhaps disappointed with today, and we don't have to take them into tomorrow, right? We can lay them down at the end of the day into the one who's on whose loving character, merciful character, we depend, okay? So I just would exhort you to, to write out something of this psalm that encourages you and make a determination. What are you going to do to change or to align yourself in a, in a stronger way with the encouragement of those verses? Now let's move to chapter 12. This is a new chapter, and it's called Out Radical Algebraic Expressions. Now we know what a ra- uh, I'm sorry, we know what an, an algebraic expression is. Let's say I said x minus 2. This is an expression right? Uh, 3x plus 4. This is also an expression. A radical means that it has a root sign, or a radic- we call this a radical sign. We're taking the square root there, the cubed root there. These are called radical expressions, okay? And we want to know how to um, how to go ahead and work with these. And that's what this whole chapter will be about. Now, the first thing we want to know is remember what it means. If we say, let's say the square root of 9, we mean what is one number where if you multiply it by itself, the answer is 9. And what would that number have to be? Three, right? So the square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 equals 9. Okay. So it's the opposite of squaring. What do I mean by that? The, square, the root is the opposite of the square or the power. Okay. So here's a square root. Okay. And then if we, the opposite expression would be 3 squared equals 9. There's the square, square root, the square root. What if I had the cubed root of 8? I'm saying what times itself 3 times equals 8? What would your answer be? Well, 1 times 1 times 1 is, is 1. That won't work. 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So this would be 2. The opposite... 2 to the cubed equals 8. So again, the cubed power, the cubed root are opposite operations. All right. Now, having re- hopefully that's a reminder to you. And now if we say evaluate. Evaluate the square root of x minus 16 if, what, what it, would that be if x equals 27. Well, what would I have to do? Plug To evaluate, you plug this value into the x. 27 minus 16. And that's the square root of 11. And just stop right there. You don't need to do the calculator for that. Okay? because it doesn't go in evenly. What if I said evaluate the square root of x minus 16 if x equals 7? Well, we take the 7, the value of the x, plug it in. That would be the square root of 7 minus 16. 7 minus 16 would be minus 9. And can we have the square root of a negative number. Okay. Well, we're saying what times itself 
would equal negative 9. If these were both positive, this would have to equal positive. So that won't work. If these were both negative, this would have to be positive. So that won't work. So this is a non-real number, okay? Or no real value, a real number value. There are other number systems. In fact, it is an imaginary number, and you will learn about that later. But there is no real uh, value, okay, that will make, that will solve this. What if I said, find x if the square root of x minus 16 equals 9. Now, how is this one different? Okay, the, the, up here, I substitute it, right? And here, I substitute it. But here, I'm not substituting. I have an equal sign. Okay. I'm saying, well, find what x would be if the whole expression equals something. Okay. So how do I do this? Well, I could square the left side and square the right side. Now, why does that work? Well, we know that we can do anything to the left side of the equation if we do it all to the also to the right side of the equation. But what would I say if I said, if I took the square root of 16 and I squared it? What would the answer be? Well, the square root of 16 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So if you take the square root of something, if there's no number in the index, that would be the square root, if you take the square root of something and then square it, you end up with just the number. So if I had the square root of 11 and I squared it, the answer would be 11. Okay, so back to my problem then. If I square both sides, remember if you square a square root, you take it out from under the radical. So the left side would just be x minus 16. The right side would be 9 squared, or 9 times 9, which is 81. And now finish it off by adding 81, 91, 97. See how that works? So to review 12.1. If I have an expression, and it's a ra under a radical, so it's a radical algebraic expression, there are two kinds of problems. One is I could evaluate it if I give you a value for x, some kind of number. And then you would plug that number in and simplify. That's problem number one. Two, I could solve for x if I know the um, value of the whole expression. So, if I said this equals 3, then I could solve if I know the value, okay, the now value of the expression. That means I have an equal sign. And how do I do that? I square both sides. That's the basic method. And the basic method here is substitution. So 
So here, square both sides. Remember, it undoes the square root. x minus 7, 3 squared is 9. Add x equals 16. Here, um, if I gave it a number like 4, I'd substitute. Well, I want to give it a different number. I don't want to be involved in a, uh, let's say I, I uh, let's say I want to give it a, a number like 12. Then it would be 12 minus 7, which is the square root of 5. And that's a good enough answer, just like that. So what you're going to be doing is doing all the ones on the left-hand side, which will be 1 through 9 odd, and, and do every part. So most some of them have two parts, some of them have three parts. So I think that's clear enough. So um, maybe I'll just do one more example for you here. Let's say number two. It says, evaluate the square root of 5x if x equals 8. That's A, part A. So I plug in the 8 for the x. 5 times 8. And this is the square root of 40. Now, there will be a way to simplify that, but I don't think you know it quite yet, and it, I think we're going to explain it in the next time in, in Part B, so maybe I'll just hold off for that. Okay, And then for B, it says we have square root of 5x if x equals 125. And so again, we plug in 125, and that would be the square root of 625. Now I'm going to put that on pause just for one minute. Okay, so because I'm not teaching you how to simplify yet, in this first section, 12.1, just go ahead and use your calculator and convert to a decimal. By next um, section, we won't be doing that. But right now, his answers are going to be in decimals. And that would be the same thing here. Now, let me just review. So that was number two. Let me review the last grouping here by doing number eight. And so, so that you can make sure you see how these are different. It says find x if the square root of 3x is 12. You see how we set that up different? This is a. What would I do here? I'd square both sides. This becomes 3x equals 12 times 12, 144, divide by 3. That'd be 12, and 24 would be 8. Let's do B. It says find x if the square root of 3x is 4. Again, for these, when we have the equal sign, we square both sides. 3x equals 4 times 4, which is 16. Divide and x equals 16 thirds. Go ahead and use your calculator, or, um, yeah, just, just say go use your calculator for these. I think he's given these in decimals, okay? So you could also say, well, that's going to be 5 and 1 third, or 5.33, whatever you want to do. All right, now, let's uh, move on then to 12.2. There's going to be three skills you need to learn here. You need to learn how to simplify radicals. Or, or um, radical expressions. Okay. 
you need to know how to multiply and you need to know how to add or subtract. And I'm just going to put big R for radicals. Radicals, okay? Now, to simplify radicals, there's a couple different ways to look at this. Uh, the first way would be if I said the square root of um, 75. Well, I know that the square root of 25 is 5. So this would be 25 times 3. And the square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of 3 will just leave like that. That's basically the way he's trying to get you to approach it. And that's very good because a lot of times we want to just start thinking about these mentally, just going straight from there to there. In other words, the square root of 18, well, I know what the square root of 9 is. That is 3, and 9 times what is 18, and there it is. The square root of 32 Again, I know what the square root of 16 is, and 16 times 2 is 32. So this part can be go out front because the square root of 16 is an even 4. 4 times 4 is 16, and this part is not even, and so we'll leave that under the radical sign just like that. Okay? Now, there's another way to approach this simplifying. So let me go to the next page and show you a different approach to that. Instead, what I could do is I could do this idea of breaking it into primes. Well, 75 is 3 times 25, and 5, 25 is 5 times 5. Because this is a square root, every time I have 2 and under the radical, I could bring it outside the radical. So that is the same as 5. I don't have two 3s, so I'll just leave that under the radical. If I had square root of 36, break it into primes, and I can say, okay, that's 2 times 18. 18 is 2 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. And every time I have a 2, a, a pair, I take it out from the, under the radical. Now, of course, here I could maybe have just thought, oh, well, I know, that's going to be 6 times 6. You see, so sometimes you're going to want to do one method and sometimes another. Let's say if I had um, 32, the square root of 32. Break it into primes, which is 2 times 16. Now, I've got a choice here. I could break it all the way into primes, or I could already recognize that that's 4 times 4, so take the 4 out. Okay, so we can do these methods halfway. But let's say I said, okay, and 16 is 2 times 8, and 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. I break it all the way down. You don't have to break it all the way down. Okay, every 2 goes out. So now I have, whoops, I have, how many groups of 2 did I take out? I had one group and two groups, and I'm left with one underneath still. Or multiplying out four square root two. So, so there's several ways you're going to practice that's supposed to be a two. Look, looks like such a terrible two. All right. So that's the simplifying concept. We'll give it a little more practice before we're done. Now, the second idea is multiply. The basic rule is that whatever's ra under a radical times whatever else is under the radical, you can multiply them under the radical. Now, let me expand this rule. What if I said a times the square root of x whoops, times b times the square root of y? First off, you have to have the same root. can't be a square root times a cubed root. Okay? Well, you can multiply what's outside together a times b, and what's underneath together, 
times x, y. So that's my second rule, how to multiply. The third rule is how to add or subtract. The rule for adding to add or subtract radicals, you must have the same um, radicand or, or same expression under the radical and the same index. Okay, so if I said I had 2, the square root of 7, minus 5, the square root of 7, I can combine these because they both have the same radicand, which is 7, and the same index. They're both square roots. How do you combine them? You take, say, 2 minus 5. Well, 2 minus 5 is negative 3, and you leave the radical expression alone. You just copy it down. Okay, let's practice that again. If I have 4, the square root of 3, plus 5, the square root of 3. These are the same, so I add 4 and 5, and I get 9, the square root of 3. Don't do anything. Don't multiply. Don't change that. Just leave it right like it is. Okay, but if I had instead 2, the square root of 3, plus 5, the square root of uh, 7, I cannot add them. Cannot add. Why? Because even though they're both square roots, they are, do not have the same thing under. Cannot add. So let me pick up that idea one more time. What if I have 2, the square root of x minus 1, plus 4, the square root of x minus 1. Can I combine these? And the answer is yes. How do you combine them? You're combining what's in front. So 2 plus 4 is 6, the square root of x minus 1. So that's the third idea, and that's adding or subtracting. Now let's go. You go get your book and put it on pause and come back, and I want to go over these four examples for you. In fact, I'm going to go to a part two to do the examples on this section. So go get your book, come back, and look at part two.